All right, so another famous deal breakdown. Today I'm gonna to show you a Baltimore City deal. I'm gonna be going through all the numbers. And unlike my other videos where it's been rooming houses or maybe a bad deal, this one is a good deal. And I know it's a good deal because I bought it. So I decided to actually get this one. I'm actually halfway through renovating it. So I'm gonna show you all the numbers in my analysis that I worked through and not only some current accurate numbers for construction costs, but future ones that I'm planning. You're gonna see everything on how I broke this thing down and how I determined it was a good deal. Keep in mind, I'm using the Burr strategy on this deal. So 100% ROI is what I'm going for and then still cash flowing at the end of it. Let's go ahead and check it out. For those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Devin Moreno. I'm an investor in Baltimore City, but I actually do invest outside of Baltimore City. I do own one property uh, more toward DC, and I am going to be investing overall in the Maryland area. As of current, this video, I have six properties, manage 11 more, and work with a team of investors whom you will see throughout this channel. So make sure to definitely look at other videos if you want to see more videos related to real estate and eventually soon a lot of other money-related topics. So as a little bit of quick info, this is in the kind of Bayview area of Baltimore. It's actually in East Baltimore City. And what's most important about that is this is actually a really well-developed community. This is not your ones near vacant properties or anything like that. It's actually near Bayview Hospital. Uh, it's got a lot of greenery and a lot of like really, uh, a lot of homeowners. That's one thing I really like about the area. The area is mostly homeowners. So people are taking care of their properties. Uh, there's a lot of value to be gained here. And so you're finding houses mostly in the $200,000 range and this house was on the market for eighty nine thousand dollars and so this was a great deal in the sense that it was only a cosmetic rehab so very minimal amounts of money really needed to be put in here and uh the the owner was actually already currently living in it so it was already in a livable state uh, he just had a little bit of furniture in there uh no heating system kind of unusually enough so livable state I guess, <laughs> but basically, yeah, it was a pretty easy deal. Found it on the MLS. So for those of you who think you can't get good deals on the MLS, that is not true. I actually teach one of my mentees about how to get this one and she actually found this deal. She found the deal and I said, you know what, I'll tell you what, I'll partner with you on this deal if I can go ahead and buy it. And she was like, great. So we partnering and we're gonna go ahead and move forward with it. But on the MLS, it was on there for one day and we took it off the market. Day one, I mean, we really moved fast with this and it was excellent. Uh, the guy ended up bumping us up about 10 grand because of multiple different offers. We were like, you know what? Let's give him a 10 grand over asking price and all cash. So not even hard money. So we didn't even need hard money approval. It was all 100% cash. And I'll explain in a little bit about how I got $100,000, basically uh, in this case, $100,000 all cash. Um, but essentially, yes, that's what it was. I don't have $100,000. <laughs> it's sitting around where I can just throw it out of house. So, and I'm sure many of you are not in that situation as well. So I'll talk about that. It, definitely in other videos in more detail about how I do it, but I'll cover it slightly in this one. So let's go ahead and look at the numbers. What I do is I look at a spreadsheet over here that I'm gonna show you. This is my spreadsheet. It's gonna look complicated and all that, but I'll break it down for you. All right, and so this is the spreadsheet. And like I said, it looks complicated. There's all this information. And it, for those of you uh, who are looking at everything all at once, it's a lot of numbers, but we're gonna go by it simply, all right? You were, I'm just gonna click around and show you exactly what we're looking at. What's most important here is, this is my quick analysis spreadsheet, all right? So this is the one I do where I can do real quick numbers. Anything in yellow, is items that I change. I change those numbers and then it reflects over here. And I zoomed in a little bit, but you will notice there is some more numbers over here, but we're gonna ignore that for right now. So what we're looking at here is a purchase price of $105,000. So you may say, well, you know, what about the, the, the 10,000 over asking? He actually bumped us up even a little bit further. So we ended up doing 15K over asking, but it still worked out to be a good deal. So $105,000. Now we have an estimated uh, renovation cost of forty thousand. I'm going to get into that. How did I get that estimated renovation cost? It's actually uh, in this construction tab down here, but we'll get into that next. We have an ARV, so two hundred thousand dollars. How did I get to that number? Let's go into my friend Austin Carroll. All right, he's actually on this channel. For those of you who have seen some of his videos, he's a realtor and uh, he broke a comp for me where uh, he got to show me comps in the area. Now keep in mind, this is a duplex. So you're noticing this property is here in this Joseph Lee area, but he's pulling comps way over here. 
Now, the important thing you want to know about a duplex property is that comps for those are a little bit harder to find. You actually have to go wider than if you do a single family home because those are everywhere. In the area that I'm in, it's actually not zoned. Uh, you can no longer get new houses zoned for duplexes. So actually, there's very few of them in that area. That actually means that we have to go wider and we can go into the Canton Brewers Hill area where we can get some nicer high-end properties for our comps. He ran the comps twice and it came up to 230. He actually had a lot of them. I'm going to show you on the screen again. But um, just keep in mind, for those of you wanting to do comps on your own, it is possible to look at it from a single family perspective. You can just look at other similarly priced houses in the area that's sold and are going to be in your current renovation condition, the one that you're going to make it into. But in this case, for a duplex, it's a lot harder. I would definitely recommend getting a realtor to run those comps for you. So these are the comps we're looking at, all right? Now, in this Joseph Lee area of this Bayview area, we're noticing, all right, we got a comp for 230, and this one, we look at the renovation, and it looks good, all right? Well, here, <laughs> once this thing loads. But essentially, the house actually was in really good shape. And then this one, you have 175,000, all right? Sorry, also in the same area. And, you know, it, well, this is actually the 150, but basically, you're looking at it, okay, it's... From this one house, all right, I apologize these images aren't loading here, but from this one house, uh, the, the quality of the house wasn't as great, all right? And then we get these comps over here, which he's really confident we can get. So we got 150, 232, 190, 286, all right? So uh, there's a couple in the 230 region, and I'm not going to show it because it seems like these pictures won't load, but essentially... These 230s are going to be more of what I'm actually going to do. I'm going to do a high-end renovation for a rental. Make sure it's a rental grade high-end and I'll explain what I mean by that. All right, so I know I can get about a 230. So here, you're noticing I'm only putting 200. Why is that? That's because I don't want my mortgage to be too high. I just want to get my money back. But also, I'm being conservative, all right? So I know that, all right, even though Austin is confident that my comps can come back higher, that's what I'm going for. Interest rate, 4.25%. If you guys don't know, I have a strategy that I talk about in another video. I'll link it down below on how we get these low interest rates. It's actually because we don't put the properties in an LLC immediately. We actually do it a little bit later, but I'll ex I explain that in another video, so definitely click on that um, after you watch this one. So uh, then we have the down payment equity. What this means, if you're not doing a, uh, a turnkey property, if you're doing a birth strategy, then it's not really a down payment. It's really equity. That's because the bank will only put 75% give you 75% in a cash out refinance. All right, I talk about that in other videos, but you can only get 75% of your ARV. Okay, that's important. Of this ARV, you get 75% of it, they'll give you all that money back in cash. That pays for your construction, that pays for all of your fee, uh, everything that you put into it, hopefully, if you do the bird correctly. Then you have a 10% vacancy factor on a duplex, I usually say 10%, on a single family home, I say 5%. So it's gonna factor that in, I'll show you that, that math over uh, in a little bit. Tax assessed value. So what is the tax assessed value? All right, so we can go on to SDAT, and here you can find in the State Department, uh, it's a taxation website, here you find the total value of it right here. All right, so they give you that, and now I know what the tax assessed value is. Now keep in mind, one really interesting note about tax assessed value is when you renovate the house, you actually don't get the new assessed value of your new renovation until like three years later. So you're actually gonna be paying taxes on the uh, before renovation amount for quite a while before you actually get the new assessment. So that's actually a really awesome thing about the birth strategy is you can save a lot on taxes by doing this. Now, the property tax rate is 2 point, uh, it's essentially 2.25%, 2 but we 2.3 for this Excel spreadsheet purposes. But um, uh, effectively, we're not gonna do any property management, but we do have a slot in here in case we want to. We actually never intend to do that. I'm gonna manage it all on my own. Long-term insurance, it's gonna be $1,200. Maintenance, $1,200. Usually you do $100 for a small house like this. Uh, but you can do a little bit more if the house is a little bit bigger. Remember, these are just allocations, so I'm just planning for it. I intend to pay the water. I'm expecting it's going to be about $100 per unit. This is a duplex, so $2,400. CapEx, that is your uh, big expenditures, roof and all that repairs. A lot of the systems I'm putting in here are going to be brand new, so I don't really need to budget a lot for that. Maybe $100 a month, but really not much more than that. Remember, I'm going to be renovating it. No condo fees, no association fees. Then 
title costs. These are all the purchase costs. I'm not gonna break them down, but these were the actual costs, okay? So if you want, you can look at this video again, reference it again, but the, the, these were the actual costs. And remember, you will go through this again twice, as it says here, if you do a BRRRR. So you're gonna end up paying these costs again because you have to refinance. All right, now what does that mean? All of these get added up into this expense category. Now I'm gonna bring it all the way over here. All right, it gets added up here. So you see the property taxes comes out to, you know, it's it's of the property taxes we saw, it's 210 monthly, you know, here's your insurance. These are all your costs, all right? It's breaking it down for you. Then we have all these, you see in the income, total income, where did I get that from? Sorry, one more thing, rents, all right? So we have 1250 in rent here, 900 in rent for the unit two. See, the top unit, is actually unit two, that is a one bedroom. We're gonna make it nice and all that, but it is still a one bedroom apartment. The bottom unit though is gonna be a two bedroom apartment. So how did I get the rent amounts that I'm looking at here? Well, I went on Zillow and I decided, all right, here I am, all right, in that Bayview, Joseph Lee area, and what are rents going for, all right? Let's look it up. I mean, we got a two bed, two bath for 1.4K. We have a one bed, one bath for 900. Then we have uh, another one bed, one bath for 1K. And then we have, uh, here's two units here, one bed, one bath, 1,000. And you're seeing these consistent rates, all right? Two bed, one bath. So I'm being, look at this. My two bed, uh, two bath that I'm gonna be making is actually under these rates. So why am I shorting myself, all right? Look, I'm seeing one bed, one bath for 1,000. Why am I shorting myself a 900? Well, that's because I intend to still list at, you know, 1,000, I still, still intend to try to rent it at 13, 1,400, but if I need to go lower, I can. Always make sure you do your numbers conservatively. And so next we uh, take this and that goes into our yearly amount, all right? So this is the monthly and this is the annual, all right? And that gets brought back over here. So uh, we're, we're gonna be looking at all this again. And by the way, if any of you guys want this spreadsheet, let me know in the comment section below. I actually uh, am trying to sell it now. Um, essentially, my mentor, he wanted to uh, rerun it, rerun it, make sure it actually works, make sure this Excel spreadsheet is as friendly as possible. You may have noted in previous deal breakdowns, numbers were all over the place, uh, the, the sections and all that. We wanted to simplify it for newer investors coming in. So. Uh, he decided he wants to sell it for $40, so if you're interested in that, email me in the description below, or you can comment below, and I'll show you where to go if you will like that. Like I said, this whole spreadsheet, and if you do buy it, well, then any updated version we will send you for free. You know, obviously, we just have to know that you actually bought it. You're the one. You contact us from the same email. So let's go back into the deal breakdown. All right, so... Now you, you're seeing where all these costs come out. You're seeing this debt service, all right? This debt service here is the mortgage. So the mortgage payments all calculated in there for me. We're expecting this much based on, you know, the interest rate and the insurance and all that. Like, so it, it gets calculated for me. So what's all this in the middle here? All right, so let, let's go back here. Hopefully, like I said, not gonna overwhelm you with all these numbers, but this is a section that we're looking at. What you're looking at is these metrics right here, these buy and hold metrics. We're looking at, all right, pretty much the numbers I want you to see is this one, all right? This is the cash flow per month. That's after all my allocations. So remember, I'm bringing in $2,150, but my mortgage is expected to be 1,047. So you might be thinking, well, you're bringing in over 1,000 in cash flow a month. Why is your number only 451? Well, that's because of all of my allocations. Remember, I'm, I'm paying for things that I haven't paid for yet. My maintenance and my, my CapEx and stuff like that. They're calculations. So keep that in mind when you see my cash flow. Plus, you have actual costs like the water that I actually will run into every month. All right. And then here's my cash on cash return. 88%. All right. 88.6%. Now, the average that you want in the house is about 30% ROI. All right. And then the, these are the ideal metrics. All right. So, and then for a cash flow per month perspective, you're talking about 450. Generally, about 300 per door is pretty much really what you want. So, this is a little bit under that, but I'll show you how we can increase that later on. Um, but essentially, we have two units, and you're noticing cash left in the deal for a burst strategy. $6,000. That's too easy. I can leave $6,000 in a deal. That's not a problem. I'm going to get that money back really soon. The best part is if I actually get my actual appraisal price, let's see how that changes the numbers here. So let's type in $230,000. And now let's see where it goes. Now I'm making less in cash flow. Note that I'm making less in cash flow, but I'm making $16,000 right from the start. I'm getting paid $16,000 
to buy this property. That's effectively what I got. Remember, tax-free, because you don't pay taxes on a cash out refinance, and technically it's a loan. But my tenants are paying that loan, all right? And that's this cash flow being reduced. So if you actually want more money, then you could just cash out refinance for a larger amount, but your leverage is gonna be higher, and that means your cash flow is gonna decrease. So it's up to you and what your situation is and what you think is better. During this coronavirus pandemic, where tenants are having trouble paying rent, really makes you feel like, well, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll sacrifice the 1600, especially if it's a really long-term hold. So that might be the play. That's why I brought it back down to 200,000. I'm like, mm, I'll leave 600, 6,000 a deal. But another thing you can look at it is, well, it's $16,000. How long is it gonna take you to make that in cash flow? Well, that's up to you. At the 451, you can do the math and you can see how long it's gonna take you. It's gonna be quite a while. So it depends on if you need that money now or later. That's up to you. So now here looking at it, uh, let's say we decide to bring this back to that 200,000 number, all right? And let's say we decide to be a little less conservative. If we decide to be a little less conservative and bring this up to the actual rates that we saw earlier, all right, what does that mean? Well, now I'm reaching that 672, all right? So if I actually get my market rates, I'm actually doing incredibly well here. And you'll see even living 6,000 in deal, I'm still have 131% ROI. What does that mean? Well, it means I'm making my money back in months, not, not years. So that's effectively what that is. So these are all of those costs. That is how I broke this down in a quick analysis. So I'm gonna do one more thing in the construction area, all right? And let me show you that. Now, before I get into the construction, let me describe this house to you a little bit more. Um, we had to add a new HVAC completely. The house had no HVAC. We had to redo a lot of the plumbing because of galvanized steel. The electric was actually pretty good. We didn't have to change a lot of it. It was already pretty much in the layout that we wanted. There were multiple different layout designs that we could have chosen, but we chose the one to save more money. If you're interested in a breakdown of the entire layout, I actually am doing that in the future. So in the future, I'm gonna do a video where I'm gonna walk you through the house and tell you why I chose the layout that I did and how I saved a lot of money doing it the way I did it. So if you're interested in that, definitely like video. this video actually. In fact, please like this video because it tells me you like videos like this. So if I see a lot of likes and I see a lot of views on, a, on these type of videos, I do more deal breakdowns. You see stuff just like this, me breaking down the construction costs, which by the way, let's go ahead and get into that now. Um, the, all the construction costs for it. I'll explain over time. I'll show pictures of you know, this is what it looked like, this is what we did, and this is how much it cost us. So let's break that down. All right, so the construction breakdown, and before you panic and see all these numbers and colors, let me break this down for you. All the yellow, once again, is numbers we change. Everything else, you leave alone. Any of these beige areas are really just kind of like, you sometimes change it, sometimes not, and I'll get into why. All right, so we have all of our sections here, drawings, didn't do any, permits, $500. Generally will cost you $500 put in new permits. We had to do permits for the HVAC. So then we had demo, um, essentially that actually cost us $2,950 to demo all of the house. We actually had to take out all his furniture and all of his, his crap in the house. It actually was a lot of trash. And so we had to demo as much as we possibly could. Now keep in mind, your demo cost might increase over your initial estimate because you don't know what's behind the walls. So after you demo the walls, suddenly there's stuff in the walls that you want demoed. They're gonna add to your cost. So a lot of times you can make it easier on yourself to say, all right, demo this and then everything behind it uh, if you feel really confident about what's behind it because you don't want to cut actual electrical lines that you still need. So then concrete work, we just had some concrete repair in the driveway, $200. Then we have uh, masonry, uh, none of that. We didn't have any metal stuff to do. Uh, here we have insulation. We are doing, adding a little insulation because of where we're putting the bedroom, so $800 there. Uh, specialties, uh, none. We're not doing anything fancy. This is not a flip. Appliances. We're actually saving as many of the appliances as we can. You'll notice from these pictures that there are uh, the appliances are actually in pretty good condition in uh, the, the unit below. So we're actually going to keep those. So we actually really need to replace them in the unit above. And then we're going to be adding a washer and dryer, which did add to our plumbing costs because that didn't exist before. So unfortunately, you have to add to get that in there. Uh, plumbing costs. These were actual costs. So the labor, uh, the gas replacement. We did all the gas lines, a new hot water heater. Oh, oops. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and let me explain that real quick. So for plumbing, HVAC, and electrical, I often say if you're redoing everything, which with the plumbing we were basically doing because of all the galvanized steel, if you don't know what that is, watch other videos on why we get rid of it, but you definitely want to get rid of it. it you should estimate about six to $7,000 for a gut. Okay, so if you were redoing everything, 
six to seven thousand dollars. All right, seven thousand being on the high end, six thousand being on the loan. And uh, sometimes you can get it for even cheaper necessarily, but you might want to question the actual integrity of it. If you're only replacing like major systems, like just the furnace and the AC, uh, then it will cut down the cost even further. Same with this plumbing. If you're only doing like certain parts, we redid all the plumbing. So it should cost us six to 7,000. You're gonna notice by the sheet, we paid 5,000. So what does that mean? We got a good rate. Uh, we redid practically everything and still only paid that price. So uh, this is a good price. Um, I'll break down further, but just keep that in mind in your head uh, how much you should be paying for yours. So we're going into the HVAC. Now here we have 12,875. So you might say, okay, is that good or is that bad? Didn't you say six to 7,000? Well, that's per unit. Remember, we need two furnaces two uh, mini splits, whatever we're putting in there, all right? You need two systems for each unit. See this plumbing, we actually managed to kind of tie it all into one unit, all right? But with this one, we needed two separate systems. So this is six to 7,000 times two. So did I get a good deal? Yes, I did. I did a fine deal here. Electrical, 800. Well, there wasn't really much to do here. We just had to connect the HVAC systems to the electric, so it wasn't that big a deal. Plus, we had to connect for washer and dryer and other little things like that. Uh, then we had the earthwork, uh, none, uh, exterior improvements. Here we're going to go down and we had framing. We have like 20 beams in there. It was about $1,000. Lumber's getting expensive, especially during this whole pandemic shit. So um, essentially we have drywall. Very little. Uh, the place is mostly drywall anyway, so we just are going to be repairing it. Um, so not a lot there. Uh, we just factored in a, a labor cost for just doing that, but we actually have more drywall that we actually have to purchase. And um, essentially doors, here you're seeing some breakdowns. I'm not gonna go through all these because some of this is not gonna be interesting to you. Cabinets, we, we ripped out all the cabinets, have to redo it. So this is like essentially 18 cabinets, which is nine per unit, um, which we probably might have a little bit more than that, potentially how I design it. Uh, reglazing tubs, cabinet pools. Once again, not going over all this, but the main ones you wanna know are these major systems. So instead, six to 7,000. Actually, I'm gonna show you a quote. So this quote here you're seeing is the quote that I got for that price that you saw. Uh, what you should expect is about 25 to 33% down. Uh, I did have someone who asked me like, is that a good thing? Should I put half down? I actually don't recommend putting half down, especially on a price this big. Um, but essentially, you know, had to do this. And here's what he gave me. He gave me a furnace. He also gave me a mini split, which I'm not sure. Yep, there you go. You're seeing this uh, mini splits here. Um, essentially, those mini splits are for the top unit. That's the furnace, quote unquote. Uh, we'll get into whether or not you should do an 80% or 95%. You should always go for the higher percentages. I'll explain that in a future video when I talk about why I did what I did. Um, but essentially, this was everything. So if you're curious on what a good deal is out here, this is about a pretty good price on all of this. And uh, so let's go back to the sheet. All right, and now we're looking at, all right, all of these, all these things cost money. You see these in every video. I don't wanna go through it, but you can look at it. If you wanna pause the video, you can look at the numbers that I'm expecting that you should pay, lighting and, and uh, tiling and all of that, all of these little costs here, all right? And then we get into our final thing, all right? $51,000 is the total cost. Now you may know from the previous tab, wait, Devin, you, you said $40,000. Yes, uh, we may go over a little bit, um, even if I put 50,000. So let's go ahead and put, put that number in there. You're noticing it's not changing much. Let's, let's bring this back to our conservative figures. All right, for those of you paying attention right here, rent, conservative, uh, it's, it's still not changing much. All it's changing is our ROI, cash left in the deal, which 16,000 still is not bad. It's a 33% return at that point if I overspend by 10,000. So based on these construction costs, I've actually decided to change some things. So we were actually gonna do a lot more uh, vinyl flooring. We're actually gonna switch some of it to carpet where certain bedrooms are and all that in order to save costs. And it will still look great. You're gonna see it, uh, a final close out of this video, um, you know, in future videos where I show you, hey, this is everything that we did to it. Here's the beauty of the final end product. But essentially, these were the costs that I'm expecting to pay. Now, keep in mind, I also did this contingency. I always like adding contingencies. Uh, technically, if I'm completely on point, then it'll be that. But honestly, I think, It'll probably be 5,000 in, in stuff that I missed. So there's still some costs here that I can play with, all right? Especially these finishing costs. We can decide to do a little bit less on certain things. I can just buy less cabinets. I can, I can play around a little bit with these numbers, but essentially this is a good budget for a cosmetic renovation. So you're seeing these pictures, you're seeing, okay, how much should I expect to pay? 
in a cosmetic renovation, $50,000 is a, an average price you could pay. Potentially, depends on what you got to do. Remember, I had to add new furnaces and all these systems and everything like that. So it really kind of depends. Also, keep in mind, it's a two unit. So I'm basically doing everything twice, you know, the multiple cabinets. You wouldn't have to do that in a normal house. So just keep all that in mind about my pricing. And then maybe you're going into like a single family home and you're doing your pricing. It might be a little bit different. Um, but yeah, these are the prices that I paid. So if at any point you had any questions, you can just pause the video at any of those points. You can even ask me questions about it. If you're looking for more deal breakdowns, um, I can definitely do more of them. I'm gonna try to do them on larger properties, uh, some more single family homes, and some outside of Baltimore, because your prices are gonna change a lot if you renovate in DC, let's say. So around May of next year, I'm thinking about getting my first DC property, and maybe I can break down some more expensive houses. Uh, and so for those of you who live out in like California, and you're seeing these numbers that are so low. Well, <laughs> my labor rates are a lot cheaper. So essentially, that is it. That's my deal breakdown. Hope you all enjoyed that. If you want more of these, like this video. Like I said, if these videos are very popular, they take a lot of work because I have to do all this you know, extra work to get these. But if you like them, definitely like it and we'll do more of them. So anyway, I will talk to you all very soon.